Hi Art, Mark here and John with The Exiles. Hope you're safe and well. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna go through the first six plays of Abritsari, our unarmed uh, section of the manuscript. We'll talk about some of the plays, talk about some of the differences, uh, especially between play four and five, which often leads to some confusion. Um, and we'll just run through them in sequence. We may have, we may have struck into this, yeah, no, it's really important, okay? And that's basically what he's going for. So we're, we're, we're fighting whatever, he's got the grip, this and give it a twist and a move. Look, where the head goes, the body will follow. And that is a really important wrestling based principle. Let's quickly touch on the fact that some of these things are interchangeable. Okay, so first play first then. So the important thing to remember about this play, and we've done previous videos on this, including an unarmed workshop uh, where I think it's featured, I'll link that in the description below, um, is that you can get here in lots of different ways, okay? This is something I say a lot because I think there's this idea that we are either starting in this position, which we could have been. Um, Fury makes reference to fighting for sport and for anger, and if it's a sporting context of that period, there's every chance we might have just started grappling, okay? But if we're looking at it from the combative or the anger aspect, um, there's no way we just would have started grappling, okay? So there's lots of different ways to get into this type of position. The position we see, and if we actually swap sides just for one second, is that John is, however he's gotten here, he's secured a grip around the head and he's shooting for the hip, and I'm basically denying this control, okay? Now, he might have landed with that grip, but it might not be very tight, so I might have had to force it off. If you understand about upright wrestling, it's quite a niche kind of area because these days when we think about grappling, we think about taking people to ground, so it's quite different. Um, if we think about upright wrestling from a combative anger sort of perspective, the reason why he wants control of my hip is very, very obvious. It's a major point of control, okay? So is him having a high grip as well, but I've already missed that, so we, you know, we can skip past that for, for the moment. If you want some inspiration for why some of these mechanics and why some of these holds and grips, certainly some of the grips that the opponent is trying to gain, it's worth having a look at some other sources. We talked earlier about looking at some Greco-Roman sources. Uh, we're quite lucky in the UK. We've got a few members who've done lots of um, catch wrestling, uh, coming on and wrestling wrestling, things like that. The reasons why some of these holds are there um, are pretty obvious when you consider what upright grappling looks like, okay? And what we do with Fury is we put on the anger element. So it's really important for him to gain those two points of control. We may have, we may have struck into this, yeah, no, it's really important, okay? And that's basically what he's going for. He's looking to get that control, to twist me up, to dislocate stuff, or to put me to ground. And that's what I want to stop. We're going to set this up artificially so it's clean for the camera, but I hope that point was made. You don't just step in like this, okay? But we are going to do just that for training purposes, okay? So I've denied the control here, okay? This is now what becomes important, and it's very simply, I'm coming up, okay, to gain the straight arm, and I'm basically just wrapping over. I'm keeping the elbow high because I want to try and dislocate it. And what I do from here is a couple of different options, but the one we see is just to come across with the foot. The reason why we come across with the foot is because it's a quick action, and it gives me some weight on that side of my body to then basically try and dislocate the arm, okay? A couple of different ways to do that. You can do a tutta volta, you can actually do a volta stabile, which is often my preference, and so on and so forth. So that's the first play. Deny the control, smashing that up over, rotating it so he starts to present the shoulder and the elbow up so that basically I'm trying to pop his elbow. Bosh, okay, no problem. Easy, straightforward, other videos in this, very simple. What happens then if he's very quick and he starts to bend the arm? Or I've tried to apply the play but his arm was already bent. No, it's bent here. I can't get that play happening now, yeah? I'm gonna try for it but it's too much of a bend all the mechanical advantage is now to him okay because i'm i'm committing my limbs to actions now so what i do instead was i abandon this but i use the arm and i basically just come forward okay we call this an arm bar not to be confused with a modern arm bar which is you know on the ground hyper extension we call this an arm bar it's upright wrestling uh, and what i'm basically doing from there is i'm going to top him over i'm going to take hold of the leg as it starts to come up and i'm going to top him over i'm not going to do that today but there it is so he's come in there's a bend I've got this denied still, which is great. I can't do this play, so I immediately just come forward. I'm being very nice, but obviously I'm gonna smash that forward. As I lean, the leg comes up, and I take and I take the leg, basically. Now I think, I'll try and find it. I think I've got a video of me actually throwing someone like this. 
because of the way you destabilize the weight and because when you do it aggressively how quickly the leg comes up you can quite easily scoop that and basically just drop them on their head okay john's a lot bigger he's six foot five he's a, bit, a little bit bigger than me so i probably wouldn't get that happening but the point is you're really taking them off balance you're putting them to ground of course anger i'm not just going to throw him over and leave him there i'm going to keep hold of an arm and i'm going to try and do something with it when he's on the ground i'm not going to go to ground as that's the worst place to be for me but I'm going to keep hold of the arm and I'm going to damage him. I'm going to step on his face, whatever I need to do in that angry moment, okay? Or, I mean, I catch it and I start to put it on, but it bends, so then I shoot straight out into me. Arm up. But that's the play. If we do it from the other side, okay? So it comes up, I try to deny this. There's the bend, look, I'm on, and look, there's the leg, and I'll just do this one. And I will get that quite successfully a lot of the time. So that's the next play. The follow on from that is what happens if he actually keeps the grip. If he secures the hip and he secures the, the high grip as well. Um, so he shot forward and I've just missed it. I've just missed it and it's a very secure grip. So I can't deny that now. Well, now we're wrestling, okay? We can talk about head butts and all the rest of it, but we're gonna keep it clean today. So what I'm doing now instead is I'm basically going to secure a grip somewhere low, okay? In the manuscript it's shown on one side, but you can do it on either. And I'm basically just gonna push, push at the head, okay? And that push of the head will take him off balance, okay? And again, what I'm trying to do actually is take him off balance to the point where when I push him over, he's gonna land with his head first, okay? So that's that way. We can do it from the other side, okay? So we're, we're, we're fighting whatever, he's got the grip, okay? I can't do any of those plays from before. This arm is low, okay? That's the one that's grabbing. I'm gonna basically just push forward and twist the head. Interesting principle, where the head goes, the body will follow. So if I just grab this and give it a twist and a move, look, where the head goes, the body will follow. And that is a really important wrestling-based principle, okay? I can strike at it, I can push at it, but generally speaking, he's gonna follow his own head, okay? And that's a really important principle with this, okay? This play is often confused with the next play, okay? The next play we see is where both hands are low for my opponent, all right? So we're grappling, we're wrestling, whatever, we may have struck and it's come low, okay? Now, this is where sometimes it gets confusing because the image looks very, very similar and the way I deal with it is very, very similar too. I take a hold of something, I push at the head, okay? Now again, I'm pushing, but really I'm, I'm, I'm healing that chin, I'm smashing that head. And it's the same principle, I'm trying to lift him up, I'm trying to put him to ground. I can step with it as well to give it some more power, whatever I need, okay? Um, and you'll find this quite a lot. You will rest him, yeah. You'll find this quite a lot, okay? And the thing about these plays, as we'll talk about in a minute, is they're all interchangeable. You can link the different principles together, okay? And it's really super important to understand that. That's why it's so important to look at that video underneath in the description, because that's a workshop about stringing this stuff together. You link them together. There's a counter to this play, which is also a really important principle in the system. It's not unusual for Fiorists to use the phrase, if you see an elbow, push it. That's not unique to us, by the way. That's a generally quite a common thing in the Fiori community. And that's exactly what he's gonna do now. So he's gonna take that low grip, however he's got there. I'm gonna secure a low on there. I'm gonna push and he's gonna push my elbow. He's gonna push my elbow. He's got a very good mechanical base to push my elbow, okay? And it doesn't matter how I've got there. Even if we go back to the previous play, one high, one low, yeah? Here, anyway, one high, one low, take a grip and I'm coming in. Look, push the elbow, push the elbow, push the elbow. Yeah, you've got it, yeah? You can find that all over the place, okay? It happens in dagger, happens in sword. If you see an elbow, push it, okay? I just want you to do some upright body to body wrestling, okay? Get your heart rate up and all the rest of it. One over, one under. Okay, one over, one under. Okay, and I just want you to just move each other around. Pull each other around. Step through, yeah. Simple as that. When you've done that, what I want you to do is one active, one passive, actually I'll be active and passive, and I want you to just get used to pulling. So I'm the aggressive guy, he's just being semi-defensive. We're gonna be used to pulling, pushing, you know, just see. I just want you to get used to hitting your eye back in. Just start pushing, feeling stuff. Yeah, one active, one more passive, okay? 
let's quickly touch on the fact that some of these things are interchangeable, all right? So um, first of all, let's look at the first technique a little bit. I've done videos on this before, but let's just drop it in. So while I'm focusing on the high arm, okay, I can also collect the low arm as well, okay? So if I'm here, and that's a good bend in that, and he's got a grip, but he's not right round my hip, I can actually find this play on the low arm too, which also opens up other avenues. He doesn't necessarily have to be stepping in like this, okay? I can find that in lots of different ways that he grabs me. If we're just resting, even if it's double low, yeah, I can find the play all over the place, and that's really important. There's my hold. He starts putting this on me. I'll stop it, and I'll come out this way, okay? So one play becomes an accessible option from a completely different, completely random position. Same principle with a lot of these other plays. The other thing too, is that quite often the plays are failure options for each other, okay? So when you're trying, let's say, the third play, and that starts to go a bit wrong, you can always drop back to a different play. Quite often they become accessible when something goes wrong. It's all right, Matt, that'll work, no problem. If his arm bends, because he's quick, okay, I've got other options. I've got, you know, different plays. This fight is a series of trained responses. Important wrestling tip, marky tip this one, don't fight for something you're not gonna win, right? Again, experience tells you where you have strength, where you don't. At this point, there is very little point in trying to fight something. Gonna... This, when it's on tight and he starts cranking this on, you've got to start thinking outside of what's going on up here, okay? Because the longer I struggle against something where I've got a disadvantage, the longer he's got the durable and nasty stuff. Exactly. So if I'm too slow with that, let's set up again. Coming under Bosch, there's this, he starts to roll ahead. If I am too slow and he's got that on, I've got to start thinking about other things. There's a hand high up here, okay. There's a hip belt there, okay. He's probably going to try and straighten me up with this one. That's fine. No problem, I've got to play for that. And that's how you have to look at the Abrasari, those 16 unarmed techniques. More if you include the dagger, and you should include the dagger but they start to kind of back themselves up. Um, in uh, a month or so, I'm gonna be doing a whole workshop on this. I'm basically gonna be doing a whole bunch of different uh, things for a couple of hours, uh, basically looking at how to tie all of the uh, plays together into a workable little mini system. So that'll definitely be on the channel too. So those are those plays. Thanks for watching, thanks to John, and until the next one. Very important principle here. When I started this little section, I said, what if he doesn't want to be close? What if he just wants to keep stepping back? So as I've covered, he's moving back. Behind strikes or whatever. Behind strikes or whatever. I will beat him in three paces, okay? So if he's going backwards and I'm coming forwards with my stride, I'll beat him in three paces, which means I'll be close enough to grapple in three paces. The reason why is because my step forward is bigger than his step back. Also, in anger, People don't step back like this, right? People step forward like this when they're angry. Yeah, come on, they throw into it. People don't step backwards like that, so they're not taking massive strides. When people step backwards in fear, they do it like this. Yeah, because you're going back to that animal instinct. I don't know why, I'm not, you know, I'm not a scientist. So, if he doesn't want to close, but you're forcing the issue by dealing with this, and look, grab it, look, I'll beat him, I'll get there every time. Okay, so just bear that in mind, all right?